Good morning. It's Wednesday, March 25th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Rivers of Living Water, and our scriptures, John chapter 7. On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him. But the spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered into his glory. Our dear friends, John and Ann, live in Waynesville, North Carolina, a place close to the hearts of many North Carolina Methodists, right next to Lake Junaluska's campgrounds. Anne writes about their life in the mountains. This past week, they were once again on the Blue Ridge Parkway enjoying the falls. And Anne writes, Grandson David and I enjoyed Sunburst Falls. I said we had silent worship there with the falling water. I always think of living water welling up to eternal life and paused to thank God for what he does for us. End of quote. Elizabeth and I have traveled some of the Pisgah National Forest Trail of Waterfalls, and I've stood near them many times. Somehow, the idea of silent worship, as Anne called it, never entered my mind. But so it is. Sometimes, the silence invoked by the overpowering noise water makes crushing against ageless stone overwhelms a soul. Anne's timely piece on how life can be tossed upside down in a week, her word picture is viral pan panic, is a stark reminder that our days are looming, threatening any sense of normalcy. In such a world, it's easier to wander into fear, loathing the darkness. It's totally counterintuitive to stop and thank God amidst the news media's onslaught of disaster piled on calamity concerning the COVID-19 virus. We are so conditioned lately to what the next morning's game-changing event will bring. You almost hate to turn on the TV. One Facebook friend, whom I've known since kindergarten, posted that her husband is currently in the hospital with a bacterial infection in isolation. She was very quick to point out that he did not have the coronavirus. A month ago, none of us would have leaped to that conclusion of pandemic in a high school buddy. Now, everything's changed. And that's the point for the church and every follower of Jesus Christ. Everything has changed. No longer is there an inviolability of same old, same old. No footsteps are heard in the sanctuaries on Sunday mornings at 11 o'clock. It isn't business as usual, and the waters are highly uncharted as to what that means for the future. And if this pandemic viral bug can toss everything on its ear, grabbing the whole world's attention and economy in two news cycles, Think what the antidote of living water can accomplish for eternity if we who believe and follow Jesus Christ see that opportunity before us to interpret to 21st century culture that whatever it is that kills the body is to be feared much less than he who holds our souls in his power. Jesus taught this in Matthew chapter 10. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God, who can destroy both soul and body in hell. For you today, the current crisis may or may not be a judgment of God, or simply a genetic evil cooked up in a Petri dish, but it certainly should help us focus on the only real center for disease control. 2,000 years ago, it was set up on a hill that looks like a skull, And it was set up to battle the virus of sin, the ultimate pandemic crisis for humanity's eternity. And Christ beat the stuffing out of the Lucifer virus. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.